and the plastic rod will gain the negative charge now you can answer this particular question why animal fur becomes positively charged because further it is observed that when a glass rod and a plastic rod are brought close to each other they two shows the attraction why is it so because they two spheres rearrange themselves and on further separation what we notice is that the charges get uniformly distributed charges can increase or decrease only in the units of e thus at macroscopic level the quantization has no practical consequences and can be ignored automatically it becomes continuous so to begin with let's have an introduction of this particular topic that is of electrostatics now what is electrostatics electrostatics is the branch of physics which deals with the study of forces fields and potentials arising from static charges this word electricity is derived from the greek word electron which means amber so the first of all the electrostatic how it was observed it was observed by greek philosopher thales of miletus when he observed that amber is rubbed with wool it attracts the light objects so we are having one activity using comb and paper to show the how that electrostatics uh, was observed that we can have a charged comb and the pieces of paper now when this charged comb is brought near the pieces of the paper it is observed that the pieces of paper get attracted towards the comb it is just because of the static electricity so now next what we are having the electric charge the new topic will be the basic topic that we have to start is the electric charge now mind it the charge is a scalar physical quantity that is associated with matter due to which it produces and experiences electrical and magnetic effects that is our concern in this particular 12th class in all the coming uh, part 1 book we will be dealing with the electrical and magnetic effects now an obvious question comes to mind what is the origin of charge the origin of charge or the cause of charging is the actual transfer of electrons from one material to another now mind it the key word here is the actual transfer of electrons now what is meant by this actual transfer of electrons let us see if we are having a neutral body in neutral body we know that the number of electrons and number of protons are always equal but when this neutral body changes to a positively charged body how it be can become a positively charged body it is just by donating the number of electrons so by donating what we can have number of electrons will always be less than the number of electrons thus a neutral body can become a positively charged so keep this in mind whenever the electrons are donated the body becomes positively charged now how uh, this neutral body can become a negatively charged body it can become a negatively charged body by accepting the electrons so for this negatively charged body mind it the number of electrons will always be greater than the number of protons thus we have seen the two types of the charges what are they one is positive and the other one is negative so a neutral body can become a positively charged body or it can become a negatively charged body now the other consequences that is related with the charge is called is, is again as the mass now what happens to the mass of a body if we are having a neutral body of mass m and when it becomes a positively charged body what will happen by donating the electrons it has become a positively charged body so what will happen naturally now its mass will be new mass will be m dash which will always be less than the original mass of a neutral body now another case if the same neutral body let us suppose it gets converted to a it becomes a negatively charged body now we know that how a body can become a negatively charged by accepting the electrons now by accepting the electrons since electrons are accompanied by masses so this negatively charged body its new mass will become m dash which will always be greater than the mass of the original neutral body so keep this in mind whenever a neutral body is a become, becomes a positively charged its mass is always lesser than the original mass and when a neutral body becomes a negatively charged body its mass always becomes a greater than the original now next our topic will be the methods of charging now there are the three methods of charging what are they first is rubbing second is charging by conduction and third is charging by induction so let us first concentrate on each of them one by one so first we will be having rubbing so what is rubbing rubbing is basically the charging by friction 
so for in rubbing what we have to take we have to take one glass rod and the one silk cloth when these two things are rubbed against each other mind it they are in physical contact and they are rubbing against each other so one of the what we will observe is that this glass rod will become positively charged and the silk cloth will become a negatively charged now the obvious question comes into mind why this becomes positively charged because the rod would have transferred some of the electrons to the silk cloth keep this in mind whenever the electrons are transferred from the glass rod to the silk cloth it becomes positively charged and when the silk will become gets negatively charged because it has gained certain electrons from the uh, uh, electrons given by the rod similarly if we rub an animal fur against the plastic rod what we will notice is that animal fur will gain the positive charge and the plastic rod will gain the negative charge now you can answer this particular question why animal fur becomes positively charged because it has donated or it has transferred some of its electrons to the positive plastic rod thus the plastic rod which accepts the electrons becomes negatively charged and animal fur which is, has donated the electrons becomes positively charged now the explanation of this particular static electricity is the electron theory of electrification what this theory explains that electricity developed on bodies when two suitable bodies are rubbed with each other is called as the frictional electricity mind it here the key word is that two suitable bodies are rubbed with each other that is called as the static electricity whenever the two static bodies are rubbed with each other this is the static electricity now in order to electrify a neutral body now in order to electrify a neutral body the neutral body can have the excess of charge or it can be the it can be the deficient of the charges now in our whenever what we can do whenever a charge body is being charged positively that is by losing some of its electrons and a body can become charged negative charged negatively by gaining some of the electrons so what is the key statement here a body becomes positively charged by losing some of its electrons and a body can become a negatively charged by gaining some of the electrons so this is called as the electron theory of electrification now next it is observed that whenever a glass rod two glass rods are rubbed with a uh, wool or a silk cloth are brought close to each other they repel each other why is it so because both the glass rods have developed same kind of the charge so it has been observed that they start uh, repelling each other now similarly when we take the two plastic rods rubbed with cat's fur they again repel each other why is it so because the their two plastic rods develop the same kind of the charge but it is further it is observed that when a glass rod and a plastic rod are brought close to each other they two shows the attraction why is it so because they two are oppositely charged so based on this particular observation the conclusion drawn is that the like charges repel and unlike charges attract each other this is how we can show the repulsion and this is the attraction part this is there is another way that like charges repel two positive charges will repel and two negative charges will repel similarly the opposite charges that is one positive and one negative will attract each other next the second method is charging by induction now what happens in charging by induction we have to take the two metallic spheres a and b brought close to the each other now we have to bring a charged rod if we want to charge the two spheres we have to bring a charged rod which is already positively charged because of this positively charged rod what will happen the free electrons in the sphere are attracted towards the rod mind it here what will happen the electro the free electrons of the sphere a will attracted towards because of this positive charge and similarly the positive charges of b get accumulated on the rear side of its rear side so what this is called as the method of induction of charges and it happens almost instantly thus accumulated charges remain on the surface next what we have to do if this the two spheres are just being separated out then what we will notice is that the sphere a will still having negative charge and the sphere b is still having a positive charge now if we remove this plastic rod this charged rod what we will notice is that the charges on the spheres rearrange themselves and on further separation what we notice is that the charges get uniformly distributed over them so in this process what we have noticed is that metal spheres will each be equal and oppositely charged keep this in mind this will be your key statement what is the key statement metal spheres they will by induction by the method of induction they can be equally and oppositely charged this question can be asked how we can charge the two metal spheres equally and oppositely charged this is possible only by the method of induction so now let's have a one knowledge test now what the knowledge test says is 
how can you charge a metal sphere positively without touching it mind it here the key word is positively so in order to charge a sphere positively what we have to do we have to take one uncharged sphere that is a isolated sphere now in order to charge this positively we have to bring this negatively charged rod near it so that the positive charges of this sphere get attracted towards this particular rod and negative charge get accumulated on the other side when we ground this all the negative charges will be grounded over in this particular direction and the positive charges again there will be the redistribution so all this you have to explain in words so this is how you can explain in detail how we can charge a metal sphere positively now the similar question that can be asked on this particular pattern is how a metal sphere can be charged negatively mind it here the keyword is negatively so in order to charge a sphere negatively we have to bring a positively charged rod we have to bring a positively charged near it so this sphere will get develop the will develop the negative charge so mind it by the method of induction always the opposite charges that get developed on the in isolated body next question is describe how two metal spheres can be oppositely charged by induction now this question i have explained earlier in, in the form of article in the uh, previous slide so i think now you all will be able to solve it go for it now the next and the last method of charging is charging by conduction now what's the difference in between this conduction and induction is that here we have to touch that two objects without rubbing so there the two objects are in contact with each other but we are not rubbing it mind it the key word here is just they are in touch with each other and in induction they were not in touch there we were having the without touching them so here what we notice is that when a charged body is brought in contact with an uncharged conductor charge flows from the charged body to the uncharged body this is the key statement over here the charge will always flows from charged body to the uncharged body see how this happens if we have a charged body which is positively charged this positive charge resides on the outer surface and we are having another uncharged body held at a separation but now if with the two bodies bring in contact what we notice is that there is a redistribution of the charges and now when the two spheres are get separated they are both the bodies become positively charged so mind it in case of a conduction in case of a conduction the body can be charged with the same sign keep this in mind the body can be charged with the same sign but in induction the bodies are charged with the opposite sign opposite nature of charges next let us come to the next article unit and dimensional formula the si unit of charge is coulomb which is denoted by the symbol c the cgs unit of charge is esu which is read as electrostatic unit the dimensional formula of q is equals to a into t next is point charge now this point charge name will be coming frequently in the chapter so let us uh, it's worth mentioning over here that what is a point charge it's whose special size is negligible as compared to other distances that is its dimensions are negligible as compared to the other distances now let's come on to the general properties of the charge there are various properties of the charge so let us go for them first is charge is a scalar quantity charge is transferable charge is always associated with the mass charge is conserved charge is invariance charge produces electric and magnetic field charges resides on the outer surface of the conductor and the charge is quantized minded these are all these all are are the general properties now let us go for the basic properties of the charges that will be asked in the board so if just if only three properties are being asked so you have to mention these three basic properties of the charges let us see what are they first is the additivity of the charges the point charges are scalars mind it the charges are always scalars that means they are not having any direction only the magnitude and they can be added algebraically what is meant by added algebraically if your body is having number of charges q1 q2 q3 are the point charges then again here that is point charges we will be referring to the point charges always because their dimension are very very small or negligible so the total charge on the body will become q1 plus q2 plus q3 plus qn charges have no direction but can be positive or negative let us see an example of this additivity of the charge so we are having a one question check a total charge on a system containing four charges what are they minus 3 micro coulomb 2 micro coulomb 4 micro coulomb and minus 5 coulomb micro coulomb so the total charge on the body will be what the algebraic sum that is these numerical values are added with this with this uh, with the help of their uh, sign all with uh, sign only so the total charge on the body will become minus 2 micro coulomb that is the ch bod net uh, charge on the body is negative i hope this would be clear to you so the next is the next property is the basic property is the conservation of charges 
now the meaning of conservation is clear to all that nothing is being uh, added or nothing can be deleted only the things is that transferred so the total charge in an isolated system is always conserved that is constant we cannot add or we cannot remove only the, in an isolated system the charges get transferred from one body to another but the net charge of the system remains the same so during rubbing basically what happens no new charges are being created only there is a redistribution of the charges now next third property is the quantization of charges now this word term will be new to all of you uh, those who are the beginner of the 12th class so what is the quantization that is the charge is always represented in the form of q equals to ne here this is the formula for the quantization of charges q equals to ne where q is the total amount of charge n is the integral in integer and e is the charge on a basic elementary particle that is electron so the charge on an electron is 1.621 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb this is called as the quantization of charge now what is the cause of quantization the cause of quantization is that during rubbing only an integral number of electrons can be transferred keep that this is the key statement only the integral an integral number of electrons can be transferred it means that either 1 2 3 or 4 number of electrons or this is the integral num integral number the electrons can be transferred not in fraction that is 1 by 2 half of the electron 3 by 2 of the electron 4 by 5 with the electrons will never be get transferred that is what is meant by the quantization of charge that means whenever the electrons are being transferred they are always transferred in an integral multiple of e now quantization is usually ignored at micros macroscopic level because at that point charges are taken to be continuous now what is meant by macroscopic level that means at large level the charges are so continuous that this integral constant concept can be ignored that is quantization of charge can be ignored and they can be treated as continuous now next what we have it is 1 micro coulomb is equals to 10 to the power minus 6 coulomb now let's have a knowledge test based on this quantization so what the knowledge test is all is having for us how many electrons constitute one coulomb of charge so here the key word is one coulomb of charge so number of electrons present in one coulomb of charge how we can compute by using the formula q equals to ne in this particular formula we have to put the various magnitude that is the given question q equals to one coulomb we have to compute the number of electrons for one coulomb so value of q will become one coulomb then charge electronic charges 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb so on substituting these particular values in this particular given formula we will get and so on solving we will get n equals to 6.25 no 10 to the power 18 see how many number of electrons so huge large quantity of electrons are present in only one coulomb of charge so at this particular stage the quantization of charge can be ignored and it becomes a continuous quantity that is what is meant by this now the next question is why can one ignore quantization of electric charge when dealing with macroscopic that is the large scale charges now what is the reason behind that because at macroscopic level one deals with the charges that are enormous compared to the magnitude of the charge e just now i have shown you in one coulomb of charge we are dealing with 10 to the power 18 electrons so it is such a huge amount that at macroscopic level we are having a enormous or a large number of uh, number of electrons so that we can ignore so that the charges can increase or decrease only in the units of e thus at macroscopic level the quantization has no practical consequences and can be ignored automatically it becomes continuous so we can ignore the quantization of the charge whereas at microscopic level where we are dealing with only few tens or hundreds of electrons the quantization of the charge cannot be ignored we have to keep on counting the number of electrons this is all about what is meant by the uh, negligence of the uh, quantization of a charge at a microscopic level that's all for the today's video hope you would have enjoyed this video and in this what video what we have seen is that introductory part the static electricity the methods of charging and the basic properties of the charging now in the upcoming video keep on staying tuned and we will be having lots of information related to the coulomb's law thank you all